Good morning, friends. Dying Christ destroyed death, and rising Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory, and as in baptism, Ella Lois Fox put on Christ, so in Christ may she be clothed with God's glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children, and what we shall be has not yet been revealed. But we know that when our Savior appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Friends, we gather this day to praise God and witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Lois Fox. We come together in our grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, the resurrection. As uh, you are able, we invite you to stand as we sing together, Great is Thy Faithfulness. The, The words can be found in your program. Great is thy faithfulness, great. 
って。We bow together for a word of prayer. Let's just take a deep breath in and blow slowly out. Oh Lord, we come into this moment knowing that you, O、oh、God, who gave us birth, that you are ever more ready to hear us than we are to pray. That you know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Jesus, our risen Lord, you have gone before us in death, in resurrection, in the ascension into the right hand of the Father. Grant us the assurance of your presence that we who are anxious and fearful in the face of death may confidently face the future. Knowing that you have prepared a place for all who love you. Eternal God, we thank you for the many who have finished lives in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us and we name them in our hearts before you. Especially this day, we praise you for Ella Lois Fox, whom we entrust into your gracious presence. Spirit of God, let your light shine on these, your sons and daughters, and help us to believe where we have not seen. Lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home that is not made with hands but eternal in the heavens through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The reading this day is from Psalm 23 The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Amen. Psalm 23, a favorite in times of life and in death, because it tells us of a God who is a good shepherd. In the best and in the worst of times. A God who is strong, who we can rely on when turmoil, when the confusion of death is near, when we feel lost and afraid. Psalm 23 is a prayer written by King David, the great hero of the Bible, a man after God's own heart. And it reminds us that even the greatest and most powerful of kings who directed armies and ruled over a great and vast kingdom of people, who provided and cared for so, so many, even this man knew that he needed someone to look to, to provide for him, to make him lie down, that he would need help in dark valleys, that everyone. Will. King David tells us that this good shepherd puts us down in a green pasture, makes us to lie, puts us to bed, calms us, leads us, and even still as adults, not just children, can't we all still get like that? Have moments where we are exhausted and lost and in need of help. Who can help us but our Lord? Who is here to care for and guide us? That even our soul, that part of us connecting to God, can get beat up, can get disconnected, disarrayed. And our shepherd, our good shepherd, our Lord, can put that connection to God back together. The familiar King James verse says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 
Friends, we have all been through some valleys of sorrow, times of despair that we have passed through and gone a little too close to, perhaps, for our, our preference. And as we look back, and me, maybe even when it is happening, in the midst of our deep loss and pain, we can see and know that our Lord is walking with us, walks through us, is by us, caring as we are not alone. What good news in the very places that we are in despair, God is surely with us. In John's gospel in chapter 10, Jesus tell us, tells us that he, he himself, is this good shepherd that he calls his sheep by name. He knows each of our names and his sheep recognize his voice, the voice of their shepherd. And Jesus, who knows and is known by his father, who has this intimate and close relationship, that is the same kind of relationship Jesus is wanting with his sheep offering to each one of us to know and be known so intimately and closely. He invites each of us and all of us to that. And Jesus says he lays down his life in order to take it up again for his sheep, that all may be one. And we are in preparation here in the church to celebrate that amazing promise in these coming weeks on Easter Sunday. We are about to enter Holy Week, and we will see our Savior Jesus lay down his life in his suffering and take it up in the resurrection, in his ascension to the, the right hand of the Father. So as we walk with Jesus in his suffering, to his victory, Jesus makes a way for all who put their trust in him to eternal life in God's kingdom. Thanks be to God for that. The message translation ends Psalm 23 by saying, Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. Do you know that, that love of God chasing after you every day? I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. Our God is not just waiting at a distance, waiting till we kind of say, oh, God, are you over there? Trying to figure it out ourselves. God is actively pursuing, running after us to show us God's goodness and mercy every single day to lead us through the valleys of life till we come to that final valley of physical death that Jesus himself has been through. He will lead us to our final home. As King David said, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I give thanks for that invitation, that assurance, and that promise and I give thanks for Lois's new final home, greeted by her Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. We want to offer a time for those who would like to share a remembrance, a remembrance of our dear sister Lois. And we invite you to share a story or an appreciation and uh, Carolyn will bring the microphone around to those who would like. So please, uh, right here. Start off. Blessings to God and uh, praise to the head of the pulpit. Um, um, uh, I, I love Dent Lois. Um, she is my fiance's uh, aunt. And. Um, I just remember her and her husband coming over on Thanksgiving and him carving the turkey. And it was really sweet because I was like, you look like my Aunt Margaret. And then I had a picture in my car 
And uh, the uh, second brother was like, why you got a picture of my aunt in your car? I was like, that's my aunt. I was like, yeah, they look just alike. And, um, and she had just the, and they had, both of my, them had the sweetest voice. She was always sweet and uh, very compassionate and sweet. And um, I'm just gonna miss her a lot. Um, just hearing her voice, you know, it was just so sweet. And she was always caring and so compassionate to everybody. So I'm really gonna miss uh, my Aunt Lois. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Over here. I don't know if it's morning or afternoon, but hello, everybody. Um, I'm Lois's niece. My father was, uh, was her brother. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been hard. Um, she was a beautiful person. I've never in my life, short of my mother, met anybody like her. Um, never heard her say a bad word. Never heard her speak badly about anybody. Um, even when someone else, even when somebody was horrendous, you know, she mm -hmm. would just say, well, you know, that was her, that was her response. You know, she was just, she lived a Christian life. Um, she was an angel, you know, and um, anybody who met her saw that, um, whether it was friends or family, um, she lived an example for everyone. And um, I'll truly miss her, I love her. And she was beautiful all the way until the end. Thank you. Hello, my name is Daria Giles. Um, I am her. Could you hold the microphone closer? A little closer? She's my first cousin. Um, her mother and my father, Elmore Collier, were sisters and brothers. Um, she was like my mother's favorite niece. I'll, I'll say that among some of her other nieces. <laughs> but she would always call the house and she would say, How's Aunt Florence doing? And she would, you know, she was just there to the end. My mom, she passed away a few years ago and she was 102. So she kept up with her, and like you guys said, she's very sweet. And I remember one um, story that she told her, because I was uh, told me, because I was telling her about me and my husband. I think it was our 43rd anniversary, and she told me about her and George. She said that they were together from the first day they met, and I thought that was so sweet. In fact, if I'm remembering correctly, they got married on the same day. No, two weeks later. Two weeks later. Oh, we asked her to marry him. Okay, well, I, didn't, I wasn't quite sure if I had that story together, but all I know, that was a great love story. He was a fabulous person, and he loved her so, and he took such great care of her. So I really appreciate that about him. And Eric, um, sorry for your loss, and yeah, we're all going to miss her. Hello, my name is Lynn Fox. I'm a... Uh, George's niece, my father was uh, George's brother. And for maybe two minutes, Lois was my aunt by marriage because uh, after that she became my aunt in my heart. And she, um, what I would say about Lois is love. I mean, she'd always say, oh, love you. Or, you know, oh, I'm just calling to hear your voice. And just so sweet and so loving and so caring and always reaching out uh, to help me, to help my father, to help anybody, to help a stranger, um, but just so full of love. And that's what I'll remember. I uh, was lucky to see her the week before she passed and to have her tell me one more time, love you. And um, we had a chance to reminisce about some of the travels that she and George did. And she just said, oh, I had so much fun. And I just know that um, together, they had a beautiful life, they have a beautiful son, and, um, and a beautiful extended family, and we're just all lucky to have been part of it. Thank you. Oh, there's one over, way over here. Yes, so the pastor of the church and to uh, the family and to all friends, I really thank God for meeting Lois. She was a very beautiful person. I was one of the uh, caretaker, take caretakers for her and her husband. 
and they were beautiful people. She was a loving person. All that you heard is true. You know, she just took us in as we was family, you know. Whatever we wanted, she said, whatever you wanted to eat or whatever it, uh, you want, you're welcome to it. And I thank God for it. I worked for her for eight years, and mm. I treated her and her husband like my mother and my father, you know, because they was beautiful peoples and always liked caring for older peoples. And it was just a blessing, you know. And I just thank God. I, f I miss her little laugh and her the conversations that she had with us and it was just beautiful I like to I like to hear the story about her and her husband and it was just a beautiful story and she was a very beautiful person you know and I will miss her going there every day and um, but she's in a better place and I know she wouldn't want to come back here she's in a better place and I thank God for the day she passed I was there you know and I just thank God for it and all the, uh, the other t uh, caretakers, too. You know, she loved all us the same. You know, she didn't treat one no different than she did the other. You know, she loved us because we was her family. Mm -hmm. We took care of her husband and her, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm just praying for the family. Be strong. And, you know, I've been in the same place that you were in now. And I just thank God. He's just a good God. And, and he never make a mistake. <laughs> Good morning to the family of Lois and friends. I'm Frances McCullough. I'm a member of Community United Methodist Church. And many years ago, when Lois first came to visit us, I was then chair of our membership, and I saw this new person come in and was very happy to meet her and invite her to become a member of our church. I remember her as being this very, very kind, very loving kind of person. And the pastor and I was working towards um, bringing her in as a member. And she let us know that uh, she had a plan for the whole family to come into the church. So we were really, really pleased that not only did we have a chance to bring Lois into our church, but the whole family. I also remember that she was very generous. I am, am involved in many foundations and organization in the community raising funds. And I remember one Sunday, I guess there had been a, an announcement in the newspaper that the foundation was having a fundraising event. And as I was reading Lois leaving the church, she handed me a donation in support of what she had read about for this organization. And I just remember her as being this really kind and gentle person. Thank you. Thank you. Others? Oh, someone over here. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, boy, so much that we can say about Lois and, and the family and George. Eric, our hearts goes out to you during this time of bereavement. We're with you. And most importantly, we are members of the same love, same street, same community. We've been living in Lala Ranch for 27, 20 years. Mm -hmm. Lois and, and George was one of the first two that really uh, on, the, on the block that came up and really like, hello. Our, where we live, our home is directly in front of the mailbox. So Lois would walk down, George sometimes walked down, and the conversation would be like what everyone else has said about how you doing, how's your kids doing? And uh, my son Miles was born about six months once we moved in. They knew everything about this kid. He's 26 now, right? They knew everything about him, birthdays, love, school. Lois would always ask, how's your son? And also I have a daughter who's 33. How's your daughter? What they doing? What even doing? She was going through her trials and tribulations. She would always ask us how we are doing. Now, when you talk about a great God, a good God, it's not about ourselves. It's about how others are doing. And she's that kind person that's seen our family go through. My wife, within the last during COVID, lose her, her father and her mother. Mm -hmm. Lois was right there, every bit of the way. And 
although she had things going on in her life, mm -hmm. but her passion, her love, her Christ giving to her neighbors, you couldn't ask for a better neighbor. And you know, that's when you can give when you sometimes going through something yourself, and it comes from the spirit. I am so, and my wife and family are so pleased to have, we can call additional family mm -hmm. in our area because no one got your back when you go through your trials and tribulations until you get a neighbor who don't, who don't ask what, and what they can do. They say, tell me, what can we do? So I just want to say, Eric, to you once again, and the rest of the extended family members, Yes, indeed. God has another angel there on the side pocket, no doubt about it. So thank you, guys. Well, there's not much left for me to say. <laughs> Everybody has said everything. And um, what, when I first met Lois, I came to take care of George. And she welcomed me into her home. She said, whatever is here is yours. Help yourself. That's the kind of person she was. But I love to tell her funny, those funny stories because I liked her laugh. She had this laugh that you, you, nobody has ever been able to duplicate it. And that's what I love about her. And I love Eric, loved George. George was my man. <laughs> but, and then I also love this church because we watched it during the pandemic on the, um, what do you call that? Zoom. That's it. And uh, I, I, my husband and I, we just fell in love with George and, 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 and Lois, and she fell in love with us. My husband used to come and take her to the beauty shop and wait. And we lived in Vallejo. She went to the beauty shop in Vallejo. He would wait on her, and then, because he had to come and pick me up from work. So he would bring her back and all that. So it was just like a, an extended family and was the most loving people I have ever come across in my life. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I didn't know Lois a, a long time, only five years. Um, but I felt her love when I first met her. Um, my, my mother-in-law, Miss Russell, who, who worked for, um, she brought me over. She said, I want you to meet Lois. And she embraced me um, and just wanted to piggyback off what everybody was saying about her generosity. Um, man, she sent me over. I'm still trying to run this stomach off, all the sweets she sent me <laughs> for so many years. Um, Man, she was just so nice, man, so considerate. So, and everyone that, that, um, um, that knew her just, man, just loved her. She gave, gave off that, that energy, that, that glow, man, you know. And so um, it was just an honor, it was a pleasure to being able to just know her even this, this five years. Um, Eric, my brother, you know, already know. Um, this is my wife right here. She might have wanted to say a word or two because Lois always sent us over food from a distance, from Fairfield to Vallejo. So, and we enjoyed it. So she might have wanted to have a few words. Hello. Yeah, I wanted to say a little words, but I met Lois and, um, and George when my mother started working for him. My mother retired, and she didn't want to sit at home, so she ended up meeting Lois and them. And I'm like, you don't need to work. You need to just stay at home and relax. But, I, um, you know, that gave her something to do. And Eric and Lois and George, they welcomed her in. They loved on her like she was family. And then I end up, um, you know, every time I called to check on my mother, me and Lois had a conversation. How you doing? how the grandkids is doing, how she was worried about everybody, making sure everybody was all right. And I just loved her. You know, when I, if I, she heard I was sick, you know, she always was caring and asked about me. And like my husband said, she always, my mother walked in every other day with cookies and cakes and pies. I said, do it look like I need some cookies, some cakes and some pies. I said, she sent us one more thing, but I loved her. She was so compassionate. 
And the last time I seen Lois is when George passed away, when we went over there, and we was just by each other talking and eating, eating again, something I don't need to be doing at, you know, but she was, I loved her. And I just, and you know, Eric, we praying for you. We praying for the family. You know, I have love for you too. Thank you. Yes, uh, Lois was my uh, cousin, and uh, she will be uh, definitely missed. Uh, I've known her ever since, you know, I was uh, a little boy down in Texas. And uh, her mother and uh, father lived right across the road from my uh, grandparents. And... Uh, when I finally ended up, you know, in California, we finally uh, hooked up with George and Lois, and they were down in uh, Foster City. And uh, I had a little part-time job down there, but I, you know, was able to go by and uh, visit with her. And the thing with Lois was, when it comes to family, she's always there. And we used to always keep in touch, you know, there was our uh, communication, you know, well, I heard so-and-so and so-and-so had uh, passed away. And it just so happens that, you know, I had a couple other cousins pass away, and I, I thought about Lois, and I said, well, I can't call Lois no more. You know, she's already, you know, with them. But she was, you know, she's an angel, and she's like a, uh, a re not a replacement for the angels, but she's joined the group. And... Uh, you know, she will be helpful. Uh, you know, I loved her, and uh, she was a big help to me. And uh, when I stayed with, with them, you know, I told her, you know, whatever you need, you know, just call me, okay? And I'll come in there. And a few times, you know, she get a little bit stubborn at times, you know. And... Uh, I would, uh, I would go in and tell her, I'd say, Lois, you don't have to hesitate, you know, and you really don't have to ask me, because if I see it, I'm going to help you with it, okay? And, uh, you know, there was a couple of times, you know, when Eric wasn't there, you know, uh, I'd give her a hand with George, you know, okay, come on, let's, you know, you want to get him ready for bed. And for the five years, faithfully, 5 a.m., every morning, she had George up. He's going to the bathroom. After that, she washed him from head to toe. And uh, by 8 o'clock, when it's time for uh, Ernestine or Jean to be there, he was ready, dressed, and ready to sit up for the rest of the day. And uh, she loved him because it was always in her voice. You know, when something, you know, didn't exactly look right, she would say, George, baby, you all right? You no. Know? And it was the love in her voice that, you know, and a lot of times, you know, when he wanted to give up, she'd say, oh, no, you know, I'm going to help you. And uh, she told me of one of the time when she went to the doctor, you know, the doctor had a negative, you know, for her, saying, you know, why are you, why are you doing this, you know? But, you know, when they took those vows of for better or for worse, she meant every last word all the way to the end. And uh, I've been you know, grateful and thank God that I've been able to, you know, know her all this time. And uh, I'm going to miss her. But we all know that, you know, hey, she's in a much, much better place, and she's back with her love. Anyway, um, 
Thank you all very much for coming. Some of you were here for my father's funeral a few months back. And a resounding theme to what each one of you said was my father. My mother and father were one person, period. End of story. When you saw one, you saw the other. When you felt love from one, you felt, felt it from the other. And I want to thank you all for coming. Um, I want to especially thank the caregivers, Betty Spears, Ernestine Russell, and Jean Brown. You three have been with my family seven plus years, 10 years, whatever. And we could not have done it without you guys. So I thank you, thank you, thank you. You will always have a place here. I still got your invoice too. <laughs> Inside joke with Betty and I. Um, some of the things that, you know, I've been sitting here thinking for the last month what I'm gonna say and things like that. But one of the things that I came up with is that my, my mother was very concerned about me in what would happen after she left this earth. Am I gonna be alone? Because I hadn't been married for a very, very long time. Never was till now. So she's very happy that I've done two things and there's representation of this here in this room today is my Masonic brothers from Stanley Y. Beverly, Lodge number 108. She was so proud of me to become a Mason. And so that was one thing I did. But the main thing that I did is I got married to my beautiful wife, Rose, and she knows that I won't be alone because what the old saying goes, you marry your mother, I married my mother. <laughs> Um, and again, I want to thank all the family members that, that came and, uh, I got do I need two boxes? Is it that bad? <laughs> um, and, uh, again, I just, I, I, I know that mom and dad are happy again and, uh, you know, their friends and other relatives are there and, uh, they're, they're having a good time. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure there will be many more memories and moments as you miss and remember Lois's warm hugs and her asking you how you're doing, even after you asked her how she was doing, <laughs> and just her sweet smile. And so I hope you will continue to share that with each other and just be reminded of the power of that just gentle kindness and love that has power in a world that surely needs it this day. We'll have a special musical anthem, Precious Lord, uh, one of Lois's favorite songs, so we'll invite. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, help me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. 
darkness appears and the night draws near and the day is past and gone at the river I stand guide my feet oh my hand take my hand precious Lord lead me home take She's bow together in prayer. Eternal God, in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you have already turned despair into triumph and sorrow into joy. Give us faith to believe that every good that seems to be overcome and every love that seems to be buried shall rise again to life eternal through Jesus Christ. O oh God, all that you have given us is yours. And as first you gave Ella Lois Fox to us, now we give her back to you. Receive our sister Lois into the arms of your mercy. Raise her up with all your people. And for all that Lois has given us to make us what we are, for that of her which lives on in each of us, and for her life that in your love will never end, we give you thanks. As now we offer Lois back into your arms, comfort us in our loneliness, strengthen us in our weakness, and give us courage to face the future unafraid. Spirit of God, draw those of us who remain in this life closer to one another and make us faithful to serve you and guide us in knowing the peace and joy that your daughter Lois knew in part and now knows fully, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray together now the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now for our closing song, we'll have soon and very soon, we'll be using a video by Andre Crouch, because we didn't feel we could do it better than him. And we'll invite you to sing along as you like. <laughs> Thank you for jumping right in there and singing it anyway.
Praise God. Yes, we will praise the Lord. <laughs> our apologies for that. And yet, our praise will not be stopped. So thank you. Thank you, friends. Now receive the, the benediction. To the one who is able to keep you from falling to make you stand without blemish in the presence of God's glory with rejoicing. To God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time and now and forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite our funeral director forward to give our final instructions. I'd also like to remind everyone that there is a meal for all. You're all invited at the lower end of the parking lot, the large building on the left. You're all invited. Thank you.